Spain is home to mainland Europe's only desert, situated on the southern eastern part of the Iberian Peninsula, bordering with France in the north, Portugal to the west, and mainland Africa to the south. Spain spans across 500,000 kilometers squared, which is comparable to the US state of California in size. They also share similar climates, which is considered Mediterranean, characterized by warm to hot summers with almost no rainfall and winters that are short, mild, and with some sporadic rainfall. Shockingly, scientific research suggests that Spain is set to become completely desertified in the next 80 years. Right now, 31.5% of Spain is already affected by desertification, and 18% is at high risk of becoming irreversibly desert. This is due to rising temperatures and a 23% reduction in precipitation in the last 30 years, which has been causing severe droughts. The Iberian Peninsula was once covered in ancient oak forests, and over the last centuries, it was completely deforested for timber use and overgrazing of livestock. Currently, 16 million hectares of land is used for intensive industrial agriculture, which is rapidly eroding the soil further. This land loss has been decreasing food security, changing the local climate, endangering many species and negatively affecting human health. However, Spain has been making some remarkable restoration developments turning large areas suffering from desertification into fertile land. This transformation is a major accomplishment considering Spain's semi-arid regions only receive 11 inches of rainfall per year. In today's video, we're going to tell you how and why Spain is turning its deserts into biodiverse ecosystems and fertile farmlands. So stick with us and let's dive into today's video. In this episode of our Regreening the Desert series, we will be exploring one of Spain's many remarkable restoration projects to regreen the desert and turn it back into fertile land. We will start by visiting one of the most drastically affected areas in the northeastern coastal region of Spain called Catalonia, where coastal forests and farmlands are affected by salt water intrusion and soil sanination due to sea levels rising, storms, tides, droughts, and water resource management. Salination of the soil negatively impacts plant development and induces land degradation, turning these already semi-arid regions into deserts. The increased amount of soil salination is exasperated by the loss of the dune habitat, which acts as a natural barrier between the land and the sea. Sand dunes, serve an important purpose by protecting inland areas from coastal water intrusion. They are able to absorb the impact and protect inland areas from high energy storms and act as a resilient barrier to the destructive forces of wind and waves. The sand dunes of coastal Spain have been in decline since the 1970s and have accelerated in recent decades due to over-tourism. Local wildlife has suffered, such as sea turtles and birds have declined, with many species of plants endangered or disappeared altogether. In 2003, the government started a restoration project of the dunes near Barcelona airport, and by 2019, it had expanded its initiative countrywide by using a very simple and cost-effective technique. A report was published last year analyzing the dunes, which have shown a considerable improvement in recent years and have restored coastal forests and farmlands since. So I decided to go and take a look for myself to see the improvements and the techniques that have been used firsthand. As I entered the beach, I first wanted to inspect the vegetation growing in the most exposed and harsh conditions. This is the very front line where there is only pure sand and then the sea. There were some small clumps of native sand dune grasses growing here and I found many clumps of grasses that had been mulching down and degrading over several years, incredibly creating its own topsoil. 
The soil was moist to touch, and it was obviously capturing and holding water, even in this extremely harsh environment. It's even moist down here. It's actually moist, and there's soil, and it's on the beach. Look, just look here. We're on the beach. It goes deep, guys. And look, there's the sand. There's the sand, and all on top was this mulch creating topsoil right here in sandy, arid conditions. We have actual dirt, new soil being formed by all of this degrading grasses. I took a walk further down the beach to look at the larger restoration area that has been sectioned off with wooden poles, ropes and signs to stop people walking inside. What's incredible to see is the natural shape of the dunes that are like small rolling hills are an example of permaculture principles. To capture water by using ditches and contours, the water runs off and is captured in the lower lying areas, which are also slightly shaded by the dunes. In these areas, you can see much more vegetation and greenery because the water is being captured here and held for longer, compared to some of the tops of the dunes that are more exposed and much drier. We're in the middle of spring and it's great to see the wildflowers blooming. There are birds that are nesting in the sand and feeding off the seeds and small insects that are attracted to the flowers. There are pollinators, sea turtles and reptiles. Biodiversity is thriving here finally after years of human activity that had pretty much wiped out this whole area of any life at all. In 2019, Spain had the most tourist arrivals worldwide, with approximately 125 million visitors entering that year. Since 2020, Spain has experienced a 40% drop in tourism. In the last couple of years, I've also seen an increase in biodiversity on these beaches. This beautiful yellow horn poppy endemic to coastal Europe was a rare sight, and now it's multiplying all over the place. This sea rocket succulent with purple flowers is also spreading into the most sandy areas. It's a wild edible and related to the mustard, broccoli and cabbage family. The leaves can be eaten raw and it's considered healthy with B vitamins, fiber and beta carotene. They have long tap roots which help hold and stabilize soils that may be eroding. Red dock is also spreading. It loves growing in deserts and semi-arid regions. It also has been traditionally used as a herbal medicine. Many other wild useful plants grow in this almost inhospitable environment. We have wild borage popping up amongst the wildflowers. The leaves and flowers are also edible. There is wild fennel, wild carrots, red poppies and other kinds of wild edible succulents. There are also fig, strawberry fruit and almond trees all growing along this beach side. Through the expansion of the dune habitat, a natural food forest is being created. This just goes to show that it is entirely possible to thrive in some of the most harsh conditions for growing. In a place that has a lack of fresh water, high salination, low rainfall and high temperatures, there are plenty of plants that are well adapted to these conditions. By encouraging and protecting nature to grow back, we are creating biodiversity, improving our own lives and protecting ourselves against the advancement of desertification. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please smash the like button if you found this useful. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to stay up to date with our next Greening the Desert video. The Leaf of Life team is dedicated to the restoration of degraded land. If you are also passionate about this cause and would like to contribute in some way, Please make sure to check out our links. Thanks for watching the video.